Hello everyone, my name is Zach Fong, and I am currently working as an assistant resident engineer at AECOM based in Hong Kong. It's an honor for me to be here in the ISOITA 2021 to present and share with you my experience in tunneling projects of Hong Kong. The topic of my presentation today is the comparison and the evaluation of 2D numerical programs for shallow overburden tunneling analysis. My presentation will have seven sections in total, and I will start with the introduction. Most of the land in Hong Kong are mountainous terrains. With the demand of transportation increasing, one solution is to develop tunnels between major housing regions. From this layout plan, we can see that there have been many road tunnel projects proposed by the government of Hong Kong in recent years. On the other hand, from the engineer's point of view, there are so many geotechnical numerical tools that are available for designing tunnel excavation. The design principles of deep tunnel in rock are usually straightforward, like the finite element analysis for continuum rock mass stability and the discrete element analysis, including the assessment of discontinuities. However, the deep tunnels have to advance from mountainous areas into the congested urban regions, because those are where the tunnel portals are located. Then, the analysis of shallow tunnel becomes necessary, especially for those passing through soft ground or mixed ground conditions. If we take a recent road tunnel project in Hong Kong as an example, here is a partial layout plan of the proposed tunnel alignment through mountains composed of granite and tuff. This is a typical cross-section of the main tunnels, which is excavated in drill and blast method. But near the left destination, a branch tunnel is required to pass a shallow overburden area. Above that portion, there is also an existing road running across the tunnel alignment. As displaced in this enlarged partial layout plan, the tunnel is running from type A to type C, and this shaded area, type B, is the concerned shallow tunnel section. Based on the design flow chart, finite element analysis is the last but equally critical step. We don't consider any discrete element analysis because in this case, the controlling ground materials are soils rather than rocks. But still, there have been so many FEA programs available and it is necessary to determine the selection criteria and the corresponding modeling approaches of these programs. In addition, we all know that the rock tunnel excavation will experience ground relaxation during the excavation process. But how about tunnel excavation in soft ground condition? Thirdly, as 2D computer software is focused in this study, it will be challenging to include the effects taken by the horizontal pipe piles, which are installed in the pre excavation stage. How to simulate such components will be discussed later in this presentation. Together with all the mentioned research gaps, the two main objectives of this study are to compare the results of ground deformations between two of the most popular 2D numerical programs, that is Plexis 2D and Phase 2, to evaluate the effectiveness of 2D approaches for shallow tunnel design with pre excavation supporting measures by incorporating monitoring results. Now let's look closer to the background of this project. Here is a photo showing the surroundings of the concerned tunnel section, which is three to four meters beneath this red circled area. In order to reduce the influence made by tunnel excavation works, a temporary traffic deck was constructed before the excavation. On the right hand side, an illustration of the temporary support arrangement for tunnel excavation is presented. 
it should be noticed that a row of horizontal pipe piles were installed above the terminal crown as pre-actuation support measures. After that, the actuation works commenced by top heading and the bottom bench sequences. The two actuation phases are kept far enough to avoid interfacting until the breakthrough of top heading. As for the geological information, here is a longitudinal geological section. From the top to bottom, there are few completely decomposed granite, granite and a basalt deck. Section 11 with the lowest rawhead level is to be analyzed in this study, and the rock material is only the basalt deck. To model the involved ground materials, proper constitutive models should be adopted. And in this study, only the molecular model will be used. This is to minimize the influencing factors for later comparisons. To start with the basis, the three key elements of plasticity model are the yield function, hardening law, and the flow rule. If we look at the molecular models hired by both numerical programs, we can find that they adopt the same set of yield function with tension cutoff, either for 2D or even 3D modeling. Both Plexus 2D and Phase 2 can achieve the so-called linear elastic perfectly plastic modeling, which does not reflect any hardening or softening behaviors of the material. As for the flow rule, both software use dilatancy angle to define the same plasticity to define the same plastic potential function. The two tables here are the required input parameters for Plexus 2D and Phase 2, and we can find that they are basically identical. So it can be safely concluded that the MC models in both software are the same in principle, and the difference of constitutive models should not be considered as a potential reason for causing the differences of analysis results. The design parameters to be adopted in numerical models are listed here, including both the engineering parameters and the geotechnical parameters of the ground materials. In addition, Properties of installed structures are also input into models, such as the steel fiber reinforced concrete lining in one day strength and 28 day strength. The sectional properties of tra temporary traffic deck are also calculated based on the information of structural members. Now, since we get all the input data ready for numerical modeling, the next question is how to incorporate the horizontal pipe piles installed before actuation. This pre-actuation supporting method is the so-called four pulling method, which is common for tunneling in soft ground. Just to imagine a actuation and lateral support system being rotated by 90 degrees. Similarly, the horizontal pipe pile group can enhance the tunnel stability in longitudinal direction. So it can effectively increase the unsupported actuation length and reduce ground movement. For this project, the maximum unsupported distance is 1.5 meters. 3D numerical modeling is required to achieve the full solution of tunnel actuation in four pulling method but it is uncommon for designers on site. Therefore, we need to evaluate the 2D simulation methods of HPP to simplify the design process. One of the methods proposed by other researchers is to treat the installed HPP as a ground improvement measure so that an equivalent ground material can be modeled to demonstrate the reinforced ground. Such reinforced ground materials will be applied to the tunnel crown area as a composite beam. 
However, as I have mentioned before, the HPP actually mainly enhances the thermal stability in longitudinal direction, and there are no rigid, no rigid connections between the horizontal pipe house in the transverse direction. Of course, there is arching effect for the surrounding soils, but whether the reinforced region can be simply modeled as a single beam with unified elastic and strength properties in the cross-section is not generally discussed or accepted. Alternatively, to simulate the reinforced effect by horizontal pipe house, I will investigate the 2D modeling by borrowing the concept of convergence confinement method. It is possible to control the ground movement degree by defining proper ground relaxation ratios for the horizontal pipe house simulation. In order to adopt the convergence confinement method and obtain the ground relaxation ratio, three curves shall be plotted, including the ground reaction curve, support characteristic curve, and longitudinal displacement profile. Since the structural properties of shockrate lining in one day and 28 days have been defined and introduced previously, the SCC can be formed accordingly. Next, I will focus on how to obtain the G GLC and LDP by axis 2D and phase 2 in different approaches. Because of the unique characteristics of the two software, the modeling approaches cannot be made identical. For Plexus 2D, it has the M stage function that can control the convergence level of numerical calculation. After the modeling of traffic deck installation, 10 numbers of child faces are created with different M stage values ranging from 0.1 to 1.0 assigned to full phase actuation. When M stage factor is equal to 1, it means that the breakthrough of thermal actuation is achieved and the ground pressure is fully released. However, the modeling results indicate that collapse of soil body occurs when M stage is 0.5, meaning the thermal actuation cannot be self-standing without installation of temporary lining. For the application of phase 2, one option is to replace the core materials in the opening by new materials with reduced Young's modulus stage by stage to demonstrate the time-dependent behavior. The original Young's modulus are reduced by 10% each stage until the removal of core materials. As a result, calculation convergence cannot be reached only in the last stage stands for the thermal breakthrough. It also implies that the thermal excavation in this soft ground cannot be self-standing. Another option for phase 2 to simulate the horizontal pipe power is to adjust the stage factors of the internal distributed load towards the excavation boundary. Field stress vectors uh, are assigned at the first stage, which have the same magnitudes and opposite directions with the incisional ground pressures. Then, the stage factors will be reduced from 1 to 0 by 10% each stage. Similar to the Plexus 2D MS method, failure of numerical analysis occurs at 50% of the initial internal spotting pressures. All the three methods cannot achieve calculation convergence to final stage. Therefore, the complete GLC cannot be plotted based on the relationship between ground deformations and the internal spotting pressure ratios. Only partial GLCs are plotted on the right. The orange line and the blue line are similar in length, meaning these two methods demonstrate thermal collapse with 50% of initial ground pressure. While the green line phase 2 model by IR method predicts that the thermal stability can be maintained until the ground materials are relaxed by 
but the corresponding displacement will be about 150 mm. It is quite apparent that soils above Turner Crown cannot keep stable when the deformation reaches 150 mm. So the IR method by phase 2 is only giving hypothetical values in this portion of the plot, which will never happen in reality. But generally, the three curves show good agreement with each other in the beginning section. If the installation of horizontal pipe pile can help restrain the internal deformation within 40 mm, then the generated GLCs by our three methods are reliable and can be applied for further study. Here comes the longitudinal displacement profile. There are also different methods to obtain this curve, and the easiest way is to apply correlation formulas. For example, Dr. Hook proposed the following empirical equations to derive the expression of LDP, but such method requires the maximum ground deformation and the extent of plastic zone, which are not available since they have to be estimated with a complete GLC. The second way to draw an LDP is to carry out a 3D numerical analysis, which is also the most accurate way. However, it is not covered in this research and will not be discussed here. And the third method to be adopted in this research is by the interpretation of in situ monitoring results. On the right hand side, there is a longitudinal section indicating five monitoring points for ground deformation. And the tonal actuation is conducted from the right to the left. The actuation works commenced from late September 2020, and it is still ongoing. The actuation phase is now just below the monitoring point number AUMP2. Monitoring data between this period are extracted and recalibrated by ignoring any settlements caused before the tunnel actuation. It can be seen that the ground deformations kept increasing with time. AUMP5 is the earliest point to be passed by the actuation phase. It has the maximum deformation value, and then is AUMP4 and the AUMP3. If we pick any specific time, we can have the deformations of all five monitoring points at that time and draw a trend of longitudinal deformations. Five specific times have been selected and the trend lines will be presented in next page. Here we have the five deformation curves against the chain edges each curve representing a specific time. The next step is to shift these curves forward and backward so that their representing actuation phases coincide with each other and we will get this second diagram. The vertical axis is displacement and the horizontal axis is relative distance between monitoring point and actuation phase. This is very similar to a typical longitudinal displacement profile, or we can also remove the lines and only show the scattered points. And the fitted line here has the same trend as a typical LDP. Since the maximum unsupported excavation length is 1.5 meter in this project, we can draw a vertical line at 1.5 meters, and the, the vertical displacement is approximately 9 millimeters. Now that we know the unsupported terminal displacement is 9 millimeter with 1.5 meter excavation length, we can simply draw a vertical line in the GLCs generated before and get the ground relaxation ratios. For the purpose of further analysis, a unified value 
0.13 is adopted for the ground relaxation ratio by 1.5 meter actuation. With the equivalent ground relaxation ratio, we can finally make 2D modeling for the terminal actuation with pre-installed horizontal pipe piles. The mentioned three approaches, Plexus 2D and Phase 2, will also be applied here to simulate the full actuation works. The modeling stages are the same for Plexus 2D in MS method, Phase 2 in CR method, and Phase 2 in IR method. There are the initial stage, traffic deck installation as the second stage, unsupported top heading by 1.5 meter as the third stage, top heading by 3 meter with temporary lining in one day strings as the fourth stage, breakthrough of top heading with temporary lining in full strength as the fifth stage. And the three steps will repeat for bottom bench as the 6 to 8 stages. With the implementation of these numerical models, maximum ground deformations against excavation stages are plotted as the modeling outputs. It is also discovered that the maximum displacement is always at the center of the turnal crown. By the figure of displacement at crown, it could be first noticed that for the results by phase 2 in IR method, the deformations hardly change with time. The deformation trend is too flat to be reasonable, and it does not fit the trend of monitoring results as well. This might be due to the staged excavation sequence. Because the previous model for ground relaxation ratio assumes full phase excavation, and this time it models the combination of top heading and bottom bench. In addition, the initial internal supporting pressure will not be reduced by portion when excavation is ongoing and the stress redistribution occurs. For the other two deformation curves, they, re they present quite similar results with the Plexus 2D having slightly larger ultimate displacement values. Another apparent observation is that the displacement caused by top heading from stage 3 to stage 5 is much larger than that by bottom bench stage 6 to 8, which is almost negligible. One possible reason is that the excavation is in mixed ground condition, and the bottom bench is removal of rock materials, which has much larger deformation and strength parameters. If focusing on top heading, the deformation will increase with the process of ground relaxation, and uh, it is also well controlled within a reasonable level to ensure the tunnel stability. Lastly, the deformation shapes of temporary lining by three approaches are presented here. It can be seen that the first two have similar shape, both with crown deforming downwards and side walls outwards. However, the phase 2 model in IR method shows the lining deforms all inwards the terminal opening, which is not a good sign for from the structural design point of view. This could further imply that the phase 2 modeling in IR method may not be suitable for staged terminal excavation in mixed ground. In conclusion, this study demonstrated the features and differences of two popular numerical programs, Plexus 2D and Phase 2, for their application to shallow tunnels. For the calculation of ground relaxation ratios, Plexus 2D in MS method and Phase 2 in CL and IR methods all deliver similar results. For the 2D simulation of staged excavation process, only Plexus in MS methods and Phase 2 in CL methods are recommended and they both show adequate capabilities to design temporary support system for tunnel stability. Additionally, it is presented that 2D simulation of horizontal pipe piles could be achieved by applying proper ground relaxation ratios. And lastly, as a limitation of this study, the tunnel excavation is still in progress 
so future monitoring results are required for further assessment of the numerical program's abilities to predict ultimate ground deformations. That's all of my presentation today. Thank you very much.